decode renals, a new way to combat cancer. With a recent discovery by scientists that two natural substances can target and remove aging in senile cells, the battle against cancer is moving in promising new directions. Research has confirmed that the combination of quercetin and a form of vitamin E, called tocotrienols, works to rid the body of the aging cells that are a major cause of chronic inflammation and disease, while simultaneously promoting the health and growth of normal cells. Triggering cellular senescence could be a cancer breakthrough. When old cells stop dividing, they stop creating new cells. These obsolete cells also lose the ability to die off, a condition called cellular senescence. Senescent cells then accumulate in the body, emitting pro-inflammatory chemicals, promoting aging and increasing cancer risk. However, there is a scenario in which cellular senescence is desirable. Triggering senescence in malignant cancer cells not only stops their uncontrolled replication, but causes them to die. By clearing away senile cells and inducing aging in malignant cells, quercetin and tocotrienols could stop tumors from growing. In other words, manipulating cellular senescence so that it affects tumors could be the key to fighting cancer. What are tocotrienols? Tocotrienols are a form of natural vitamin E found in wheat germ, barley and some grains and nuts. They are anti-inflammatory and cholesterol lowering, and even offer protection against radiation. Most research has focused on the better known tocopherol form of vitamin E, so researchers are just beginning to discover the potential of tocotrienols, and to credit them with anti-aging effects. Recent research has focused on gamma tocotrienol, one of the four forms of tocotrienols. Studies have shown gamma tocotrienol selectively targets cancer cells, triggering cellular senescence and promoting apoptosis, a type of programmed cell suicide. At the same time, Tocotrienol greatly benefits normal, healthy cells, slowing aging, promoting normal cell division and preventing them from developing senescence. Tocotrienol's beneficial effects seem to be strengthened when it's combined with quercetin, a flavonoid and powerful antioxidant that helps plants fight off infection. Researchers classify both tocotrienol and quercetin as senolytics, meaning they can slow aging and prolong life. Research confirms tocotrienol's anti-cancer effects. A cell study published in Biofactors demonstrated that tocotrienol can stop tumors from spreading. This finding was reinforced by an animal study, in which tocotrienol inhibited tumor growth in mice that had been injected with human liver cancer cells. Other research confirmed tocotrienol's protective effects on normal cells, with researchers reporting that the vitamin reverse cell cycle arrest and reduced DNA damage. In a study published this year in Current Drug Targets, a combination of tocotrienols and quercetin induced senescence and promoted apoptosis in many different types of cancer cells, while delaying senescence in healthy cells and rejuvenating formerly healthy senescent cells. Calling quercetin and tocotrienols promising natural compounds researchers noted that they appear to satisfy all requirements for developing senescence-targeted health prompting nutraceuticals. How can I take tocotrienol and quercetin for protection against cancer? Although abundant animal and cell studies indicate the strong anti-cancer effects of these two compounds, researchers have called for more clinical studies to be performed in order to discover the most effective ways of using them. The current recommended dose of quercetin is 500 to 800 mg a day for 3 months to rid the body of senile cells, followed by a maintenance program of 150 mg a day. Benefits have been seen with dosages of tocotrienol ranging from 40 to 400 mg a day. For chemopreventive effects, experts recommend 150 mg of tocotrienol a day for 90 days, followed by a maintenance dose of 100 mg a day. Although quercetin and tocotrienol are considered generally safe, they can interact with some medications. As always, consult your doctor before supplementing with them. Bottom line. This innovative combination of compounds could well prove to be the breakthrough in cancer prevention and treatment that scientists have been searching for, combating this life-threatening disease effectively, safely and naturally. How the use of CBD oil triggers the end of chronic illness pain. If you suffer with a chronic illness, you may find the information, here, about CBD to be a great place to begin your journey back to optimal health. At first glance, the theory that some people suffer with pain due to a deficiency of cannabinoids, the psychoactive compounds in marijuana, could pass for a tongue-in-cheek witticism shared among cannabis enthusiasts. 
This is especially true in light of the suggested remedy of ingesting plant-based cannabinoids to correct the deficiency. Yet, scientific evidence supports the fact that this theory is no joke. The endocannabinoid system indeed exists in the body, and dysfunction of this complex system is associated with such hard-to-treat chronic illnesses like fibromyalgia, migraine headaches and irritable bowel syndrome. And, using cannabidiol, or CBD, has been shown in studies to offer genuine relief. What does the endocannabinoid system do? Endocannabinoids, fatty acids naturally produced by the body, include 2-arachidonylglycerol, or 2-AG- and anandamide. Anandamide can cause a feeling of relaxation and well-being similar to that produced by cannabis. In fact, this effect is so pronounced that researchers named the compound after the Sanskrit word for bliss. A purpose of the endocannabinoid system is to help regulate neurotransmitter function. Anandamide binds with cannabinoid receptors in order to control and assist vital functions such as sleep, appetite, motor control, pain perception and immune response. And, research shows that endocannabinoids can inhibit glutamate, a neurotransmitter that prolongs neuropathy, thereby causing relief of painful symptoms. Clinical endocannabinoid deficiency, or CEAST, is associated with chronic illness. Deficiencies and dysfunctional signaling in the endocannabinoid system have been strongly linked to conditions such as fibromyalgia, migraine headaches and IBS, and studies have shown that people with these illnesses have significantly lower amounts of anandamide in the brain, gut, and musculoskeletal system. Some researchers maintain that CEAST could also be at the root of such diverse diseases as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, asthma, depression, cystic fibrosis, post-traumatic stress disorder and bipolar disease. CEAST can be congenital, with heredity and genetics playing a role, or it can be acquired during fetal development. It may also develop after birth as a result of injury and infection. However it is acquired, CEAST can be easily addressed. According to recent research, ingesting plant-based cannabinoids can help restore balance in the endocannabinoid system and mitigate symptoms of CEAST. What's the difference between cannabinoids and cannabidiol? Cannabinoids are active compounds of marijuana, THC, tetrahydocannabinol, which has psychoactive effects, is a type of cannabinoid, as a CBD, or cannabidiol. While THC fits exactly into a cannabinoid receptor in the brain and nervous system known as CB1, cannabidiol doesn't. However, it accomplishes two things that may be even more helpful. It activates endocannabinoid signaling while also suppressing an enzyme called fatty acid amide hydroxylase, or FA, which breaks down beneficial anandamide. In other words, by suppressing FA, CBD can help return anandamide to optimum levels. CBD is not psychoactive, and doesn't make people feel stoned. In fact, it may even reduce the psychoactive effects of THC, including lethargy and dysphoria, that some people find objectionable. One thing is clear? CBD has significant medical benefits. The American government has taken out a patent on CBD as an antioxidant and neuroprotectant, and research into its anti-cancer effects is ongoing. CBD eases the pain associated with fibromyalgia. Research has shown that low endocannabinoid levels are associated with fibromyalgia, which is characterized by hyperalgesia, or abnormally high sensitivity to pain. Animal studies show that antagonists which work against the endocannabinoid system, can cause fibromyalgia symptoms, leading to the theory that agonists, substances which promote the activity of the endocannabinoid system, should prevent or reduce symptoms. This theory was supported by a study in which 28 fibromyalgia patients who received medical cannabis reported less pain, decreased stiffness, enhanced relaxation and improved well-being over control groups who had not received the cannabis. CBD provides migraine relief. As migraine headaches involve both the serotonergic and endocannabinoid systems, it seems logical that cannabinoids, which inhibit the release of serotonin, could relieve symptoms of migraine. In addition, migraine sufferers have significantly lower levels of anandamide. In a study of 120 migraine sufferers, CBD caused the frequency of headaches to diminish from 10.4 to 4.6 attacks per month. CBD offers hope for IBS sufferers and even those with ASD. Irritable bowel syndrome is often found along with fibromyalgia and migraines. Because gastrointestinal propulsion, secretion and inflammation are all modulated by the endocannabinoid system, 
there is reason to believe that targeting CB receptors may help. The use of cannabis to ameliorate gastrointestinal problems is not new. Since the 19th century, some natural healers have routinely recommended it to alleviate diarrhea. Research supports CBD's beneficial effects. A review of available medical research published in 2014 in Neuroendocrinology Letters explored the connection between clinical endocannabinoid deficiency in fibromyalgia, migraines, IBS and other conditions, as well as the role of medical cannabis in treating the conditions. The authors credited cannabinoids with dopamine blocking and anti-inflammatory effects, and noted that the compounds could block spinal, peripheral and gastrointestinal mechanisms that cause pain. They concluded that underlying cannabinoid deficiency indeed plays a role in the illnesses, and that the deficiency could be treated with cannabinoid medicines. Fibromyalgia and other chronic diseases can be frustrating, baffling and difficult to treat. The recent exciting research on the endocannabinoid system, and the therapeutic use of CBD, may shed a light on both treatment and cause of these debilitating conditions. If you think CBD might be right for you, discuss the treatment with a knowledgeable healthcare provider who can help develop a treatment targeted specifically to you.